During a hearing on college anti-Semitism by the House Education Committee in December 2023, the presidents of Harvard, MIT, and the University of Pennsylvania were grilled about opaque donations amounting to hundreds of millions of dollars from the government of Qatar. Rather tellingly, you can see the three Ivy League presidents clumsily deny and minimize the true scale of Qatari donations to American universities. A wealthy, oil and gas rich country like Qatar is not sending millions of dollars to universities in the US out of pure charity. Qatar, through the news network Al Jazeera and donations to American colleges, propagates anti-Semitic rhetoric and propaganda. In this video, we're going to examine the true extent of Qatar's promotion of anti-Semitic tropes and propaganda. The news media network Al Jazeera, based in Qatar and funded in part by Qatar's government, has an audience of more than 430 million households in over 150 countries. You may have heard in the news recently that Israel banned Al Jazeera from the country on national security grounds. Before this, Saudi Arabia and the UAE had banned Al Jazeera in their countries too. Critics of Israel's ban on the network stated that it was a violation of press freedom. However, many of these same people did not cry press freedom when the EU banned Russia Today and Sputnik News in 2022. Al Jazeera is a vehicle for Qatari soft power and is essentially a mouthpiece of the Qatari state. Al Jazeera has an obvious editorial slant, an anti-Semitic, anti-Israel slant. For several years, the network aired a program hosted by Egyptian Muslim cleric Yusuf Al-Qaradawi. The now deceased Al-Qaradawi publicly endorsed suicide bombings against Israel several times and spoke of reconquering Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. In 2017, an anti-Semitic Happy Merchant meme was posted on Al Jazeera's English language Twitter account. Twitter users took screenshots of the meme soon after. The news media outlet issued an unenthusiastic apology and stated that the incident was a quote unquote mistake. In November 2023, an Al Jazeera reporter interviewed a wounded man in a Gaza hospital, who proceeded to blame Hamas for his injuries. The reporter quickly ended the interview and moved to a different topic. If nothing else, the exchange itself is quite comical, and I recommend watching the video for yourself. Another aspect of Al Jazeera worth discussing is the difference between its programming for Western audiences and programming for audiences in the Arab world. It is because of the mixed messages broadcast by Al Jazeera that memes like this exist. To use a specific example, Al Jazeera English condemns Saudi Arabia's banning of gender mixing at concerts and cinemas. Al Jazeera Arabic, meanwhile, criticized the mixing of men and women at the country's National Day festivities. In 2015, leaked emails exchanged between AJA and AJE staffers regarding the Charlie Hebdo shooting highlighted disagreements between the two channels. In May 2024, Al Jazeera Arabic republished an article from the Washington Post which contained the words, alleged holocaust. During the Arab Spring, Al Jazeera's coverage of the events was noticeably slanted depending upon which country was being discussed. The network provided extensive coverage of events in Egypt and Tunisia, though it was more or less silent on events unfolding in neighboring Bahrain. In 2011, Qatar and other Gulf Arab states sent troops to Bahrain to restore order. Al Jazeera is just another arm of Qatar's foreign policy apparatus masquerading as an impartial news network. According to a 2023 report by the Institute for the Study of Global Antisemitism and Policy, more than $3 billion has flowed from Qatar to American universities. Some of the biggest recipients of Qatari funds include Cornell University, Carnegie Mellon University, Georgetown University, and Texas A&M. Qatar is the largest foreign donor to American colleges. A November 2023 paper by the Network Contagion Research Institute revealed the following findings. Anti-Semitic incidents were more frequent at universities that received Qatari money than those which did not. Universities that received funds from the Organization for Islamic Cooperation, or OIC, of which Qatar is a member, had higher levels of anti-Semitic activities than those who did not receive such funding. These donations are of questionable legality as well, since they are often unreported. A 2020 DOE probe discovered that American higher learning institutions either failed to report or underreported significant sums in foreign donations. 
According to Section 117 of the 1965 Higher Education Act, universities are required to disclose all foreign gifts and contracts over $250,000. This brings us back to the House Education Committee hearing mentioned in the beginning of the video. The three university presidents being questioned give boilerplate statements concerning the missions of their respective institutions and deny any knowledge about donations from Qatar. There is no way that the heads of these colleges had no knowledge about hundreds of millions of dollars from a foreign government. The evasive word salads uttered by these women sounded more like the answers of mafiosos being cross-examined by a prosecutor than a hearing on campus anti-Semitism. Let's not forget that Qatar has given nearly $2 billion to Hamas and once gave sanctuary to Hamas leaders. Hamas itself began as a Palestinian offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood. The ideology of the Muslim Brotherhood has been influential in Qatari state building for several decades. Qatar and radical Islamist groups are bedfellows. Qatar, despite being such a small country, possesses the soft power of a large state and anti-Semitic propaganda comes with this inordinate soft power. The state of Qatar's autocratic and radical Islamic values have permeated American college campuses and American minds in general. A foreign government whose worldview and policies are deeply antithetical to liberal and democratic values donating to our higher learning institutions should be a cause for concern. What do you guys think? What other undemocratic regimes have invested heavily in American education? What should be done to combat the undue influence these regimes have? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.